принято решение о проведении специальной военной операции. As of February 24, 2022, the onset of the Russian invasion of Ukraine, the Ukrainian military relied on Russian manufactured military equipment, much of which was outdated. Presently, they deploy advanced Western weaponry systems, such as the high mobility artillery rocket system and anti radar missiles. Over the past year, Ukraine has evolved into a technologically adept fighting force, skillfully integrating various levels of technology to support a unified strategy. In contrast, this conflict underscores that Russia, despite possessing contemporary technology and weaponry, seems unlikely to leverage its apparent technological edge. So, the question arises, why doesn't Russia use its top-tier weapons against Ukraine? There are some answers to that question, and we'll try to take a look one by one. As we know that the spotlight on Western-provided technology has predominantly centered on high-end systems such as the Patriot missile battery, HIMARS, high-speed anti-radiation missile, and the Javelin portable anti-tank missile, along with other precision anti-tank weapons. As of February 2022, Russia seemed to hold a technological edge over Ukraine on the battlefield. Similar to Ukraine, Russia has faced comparable pressures to adapt to new technology, leading to the adoption of similar solutions. For example, Russian forces have utilized quadcopter drones for tactical surveillance and reconnaissance, and, akin to the Ukrainians, have equipped some with grenades. They have also employed Iranian-made Shahed-136 drones, a type of loitering munition capable of flying overhead until a target is identified and then detonating upon impact targeting both civilian and military objectives. Despite the considerable size of its arsenal, Russian forces have failed to effectively leverage their technological advantage. Instead, Russia has opted for mid-level technology, showing hesitation to deploy its most advanced weapon systems, such as the formidable Su-57 fighter jet or the T-14 Armada tank, which was only recently introduced in Ukraine. The main reason for this hesitancy arises from the reluctance to expose high-end assets to significant risk, considering Russia's inability to secure air superiority or neutralize Ukraine's air defenses and long-range artillery. Russia continues to have the upper hand in long-range precision attack weapons like cruise missiles, but it has not been able to establish air supremacy or destroy Ukraine's long-range artillery and air defenses. Another reason why Russia is not using its most powerful weapon systems might be due flawed strategic decisions and a notable lack of competence. As we can see, Ukraine's success stems from its ability to seamlessly integrate three tiers of weapons and technology into a unified battlefield strategy. They leverage Starlink for connectivity among commanders, personnel responsible for target identification, and frontline units tasked with attacking those targets. Utilizing drones based on modified commercial quadcopters and mid-tier drones, Ukraine obtains critical real-time data for targeting and surveillance. This interconnectedness and airborne intelligence enable small mobile units to optimize the use of their limited supplies of high-end precision munitions. Ukraine's integration and utilization of this diverse array of technology and capabilities present a sharp contrast to Russia's approach to technology. Russian forces continued to mishandle their technology, for instance, in a report earlier this year, the Center for Strategic and International Studies concluded that Russian missile attacks in 2022 inflicted significant damage on Ukraine's economy and infrastructure. However, these attacks fell short of achieving the decisive strategic effects that Moscow presumably intended. This, therefore, imparts a crucial lesson for the West. The mere possession of cutting-edge technology and high-tech weaponry does not guarantee military success. Russian militaries can draw inspiration from Ukraine's example on how to effectively integrate diverse technologies and weapons, fostering agility and adaptability. 
Another response to the preceding question is that the effectiveness of Ukraine's air defenses has shown a consistent improvement since the initiation of the war, particularly in countering Russian cruise missiles. During Russia's winter campaign targeting Ukraine's electric grid, Ukraine's Air Force reported intercepting approximately 70 to 80 percent of Russian cruise missiles. From May onward, this interception rate rose to around 90 percent for both Russian cruise missiles and drones. Ukraine has also claimed success in downing nearly 80 percent of air and ground-launched ballistic missile attacks nationwide. It is also important to note that Russia has used some of its most advanced and expensive missiles in a failed bid to destroy one of Ukraine's U.S. German-provided Patriot batteries protecting Kiev. However, this strategy misfired, as the Patriot battery emerged nearly unharmed. Reports indicate that the Patriot battery successfully intercepted 100% of the 34 Iskander and Kinzhal quasi-ballistic missiles fired by Russia at Kiev as of June 28. These were missiles that Moscow had previously boasted as impervious to air and missile defenses. Besides that, getting more adaptive to the conflict, Ukraine claims to have successfully shot down six K-52s and one Mi-24 attack helicopter, Russian high-performance combat helicopters, since June 16th. Additionally, during a mutiny by Wagner forces, as many as seven Russian helicopters, including one K-52, were reportedly shot down. It is worth noting that Russia's attack helicopters are not in abundance. They initiated the war with around 150 K-52s, and it is doubtful that all were mission capable. UK Defense Intelligence estimated in October 2022 that Russia had no more than 90 K-52s in service at the war's onset. According to visual analysis by independent observers and reports from the Ukrainian Air Force, Russia may have lost up to 60 K-52s since the beginning of the conflict due to enemy fire and accidents. While the challenges posed by the K-52 losses are not unsolvable, the sustained rate of losses suggests that Russia's attack helicopter force may struggle to maintain its effectiveness. For these reasons, Russia is being more cautious in deploying its most potent weapons against Ukraine. Apart from the reluctance to expose powerful weapons to significant risk, issues with command and control effectiveness, and substantial losses, what other factors do you believe contribute to Russia's hesitancy in fully deploying its military capabilities in Ukraine? Thanks for watching. That's all for today. See you next time.